Hi. Hi, how are you? Did you go out last night? Uh, we did too. Um, it's, it's been an amazing journey to organize and be here at RightsCon with all of you, and thank you very much. There will be a lot of thank, you, thank yous tonight, but I want to start with our team in Brussels. They are my friends and colleagues, and I couldn't be more proud of uh, being with you on the same team. And uh, you guys were committed to the event planning and at the same time uh, stayed top of your policy agenda. So thank you very much. When we started planning RightsCon 2017 in Brussels, I got extremely excited about the opportunity to engage European companies. And I'm very glad that we started that process. They had an amazing contribution to the discussions, and I hope that they will go home and be the messengers, and we'll see them next year too. Dobré odpoledne a díky, že jste se všichni zúčastnili Rajskonu. Um, it feels like coming full circle, start ending with my language too. Um, one of the things we set out on this mission uh, was to kind of destigmatize um, Brussels as just a center of power. Um, we wanted to bring together many stakeholders and kind of make voices that are not often represented here, represented here. Um, we certainly felt that way. Um, I sat in rooms full of activists um, and it was empowering um, the way you guys showered us with your cards and, and contacts and enthusiasm because sometimes for us um, when we are constantly fighting the same battles in big halls, um, we tend to lose motivation. So I hope that you saw that there's a way in here and that you can continue to engage with people here. And there were a lot of cross collaborations already happening. So please use us, uh, Edry, and everyone who's in Brussels to communicate and to make change here. And um, let's, let's continue this conversation onward. So thank you all for being here. Hey everyone, it's been a pleasure to welcome you to Brussels. I'm not sure if for some of you that was the first time here, but we definitely hope to see you again. RightsCon is the place where technologies, the tech industry meet the activists, but of course a lot of our discussion is around the state and the role of the state, which is right. It's great for us to see that um, the largest uh, stakeholder group actually came from the European Commission, followed by the European Parliament and governments from more than 15 countries. We've seen participation this year for the first time from many public authorities, including law enforcement authority that had never come to RightsCon before. And it's just so that the state wants to be part of this discussion and understand the role and importance of activism and the role we play in society. So I hope we continue engaging with them and they hear our voices more and I welcome them all next year. Thank you. So we say this every year, but we have had our biggest rights con yet so far. We have had over 1,500 participants from over 100 countries, and we're so grateful for this diversity and for all of you for making it out here to join us. Uh, we've also had some amazing operational achievements this year uh, at this RightsCon. We have received tremendous support for our code of conduct policy and its visibility for our new photography lanyards and also the gender diversity present at this RightsCon. And so we're very grateful for all that support and uh, for that feedback. But we want more. So we want to hear more about your experiences at this RightsCon. We want to hear you know, what worked well. And we want to also know how we can keep improving RightsCon and how we can make it more impactful for you. And now it's my pleasure to welcome Brett on stage. Uh, oh, I've got a mic. I forgot. Hi, I'm Brett Solomon. Um, so um, can I ask everyone to stand up? including the people who are standing up. <laughs> OK, so who here was at their first RightsCon? Please put up your hand. Awesome. Can you guys sit down? Yeah, let's give them a round of applause. No, no, just the people who, sorry. Let's start this again. For people who it was their first RightsCon, please sit down. Everybody else, stay standing. OK, so that means you've been here more, twice or more, if you're still. 
Okay, were you at the first RadsCon, Gillian York? Yay! <laughs> okay, so um, um, <clears throat> sit down if it was your second RadsCon. Wow. There's people at the back. Sit down if it was your third or fourth RadsCon. How many people are still standing? <laughs> wow. Okay, wait, is there just two people Hi. standing? Yeah. <laughs> Gillian and Yokai? Who's it going to be? Sit down if it was your fifth rights gun. Oh, oh, oh. Keep standing if you were here for six rights cons. Yokai Benavi, the only person. Okay. Um, I was wondering, did anybody hang out with their buddy during the conference? Yes, awesome. Cool. So I had a chat with a number of people today about what RightsCon meant for them, and um, NASA said to me that Rights from, uh, from Palestine said to me that RightsCon represents the freedom of the internet. It's where people feel free. We are safe here. And Eileen Donahoe, who I hope is here, is a former US ambassador to the Human Rights Council under the Obama administration, said, RightsCon, this is infrastructure for global civil society. And Japlene from India, who was on a panel, she was beaming, and I said to her, you look happy. She said, I've just been, thank you, <laughs> I've just been on, a, on a, a panel on feminist principles, feminist principles of the internet. If you see yourself, you can, or a friend, um, on feminist principles of the internet. Um, and she said, and there were five panelists, and they were all women of color from the global south. Yeah. So people have been asking about the piano performance in the opening. And so when I spoke to Archip, who I think he's here, he said, it's, he is like a master pianist. He was playing the encrypted message of Mozart inside the Turkish march, which is a far more complex feat than playing the Turkish march as we understand it. So just to understand what happened there. Okay, so does anybody, did anybody here have any form of communication over the last three months with Nick D'Agostino? <laughs> Nick. <laughs> <laughs> That's a standing ovation. <laughs> wow. <laughs> some people called, some people thought Nick D'Agostino was a bot. <laughs> Nick bot. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I'm beaming right now. I just want to say thank you so much for making. Uh, you know, RightsCon, what it is, it really is a community-driven event. The program is all community-driven, and I think this one was uh, pretty special. And we had the biggest program ever, but it didn't seem too crazy, I don't think. But it was really fantastic. And um, I, I mean, it was, a, it was a quite, quite an adventure, I think, and uh, really thankful. Sorry, it's about you. No. <laughs> no. You done? Well, let's have it's a round of applause yeah, so again for this. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> okay, so I know it's hot in here. We, I want to introduce um, the Access Now team from around the world. They're going to spend just a little, like, less than a minute, or just like a little grab from their experience at Rights On. Can I just ask you guys to come up and if we could have a round of applause for them for their awesome work? <laughs> Amy Stefanovic, Billy, Islam, Rafa, Danielle, Deji, Kavi, and, and Raman. Hi, everybody. We started this conference by celebrating those who were here, but also by recognizing those who weren't. And I, for one, was incredibly moved by Manal and by Andre's words at the beginning of RightsCon 
about everybody who couldn't be here today for having exercised their human rights legitimately in areas around the world. This Rights Con to me has been the numerous meetings that have been about building bridges, strengthening partnerships, and overcoming adversities. And I've met with groups from the EU, from the US, from MENA, from Latin America, from all over the world, um, people who represented companies, people who represented governments, civil society partners who I've worked with for a really long time, and people who I've just met. And for me, RightsCon is about all of you. And the workshops that we've had here over the last three days are going to fuel policy discussions in all of those areas for the year to come. And so thank you for all of the outcomes that you have given me, and I hope that we can work together in the year ahead. Hey, everybody. Um, I'm closing out my first RightsCon, and Woo! it was awesome. Um, I'm really walking away with clearly seeing a collective and an urgent commitment from all of you. Um, to protecting those who are finding themselves increasingly at risk in this world. Um, and I'm also, I work on the grants program and I've been incredibly inspired by the work of activists from nearly 20 countries that my program was able to support to travel here to influence this space and to enrich this space. Thank you all for being here with us. RightsCon 2017 has been really a great human adventure for all of us. Where LinkSmug, our team, has been really getting stronger and stronger. We are the people journey that you don't see because we belong to ops and we are at the backstages, but it has really been a great adventure for us. We met wonderful people at the registration desk, really uh, interesting, and we did all our best to be there for them, and we hope that you enjoyed the work and the, and the help and assistance we did for all of you. I would like also, because they did a tremendous work to make this RightsCon a great success, to have a wonderful ovation for our volunteers. They did a great work. And Roya. And these volunteers are for sure the future attendees for future rights cons. And mainly, and really, uh, a great ovation to Roya, who managed all those volunteers. Thank you, Roya, for the work you did. She's there. Hello, hello everyone. Um, my name is Daniel. I'm part of Access Now tech team. And I'm really happy to be here because usually our work at the helpline, it's 24 hours, really 24 hours, but it's usually done behind the desk, behind many layers of encryption. And it's really nice to be here, to see your faces and to put a more human face uh, to that 24 by seven service. So I'm really pleased uh, to all people who visit the clinic, uh, all the people who attended uh, sessions at, uh, and made a trip to the eighth floor, to the demo room. I uh, wanted to appreciate all the participants for the discussion, for the openness. Uh, it's really great to be here. It's really, it, this is like the essence uh, of the community, and I really appreciate everyone's um, input into the conference. Thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone. Um, Deji Olukatan. Um, what we were working on, uh, you may have seen some red signs for the Keep It On Summit which was nine sessions over three days uh, devoted to fighting internet shutdowns. Uh, the way we describe the problem is that it's a moonshot problem, uh, but there are multiple moons and a thousand trajectories. Um, but one thing that did happen today was we moved a lot closer to one of those moons um, through a statement from the Freedom Online Coalition that unequivocally condemned shutdowns. So thank you. Um, I also want to give a shout out to Gustav Bjorkston and Peter Mysek and Anchi Lee, who uh, are really the brains behind the Keep It On campaign. And thanks to all of the activists from around the world who showed up to help us address this problem. So thank you. Um, I am Javier Paliero. I work as a policy analyst for Access Now with a focus on Latin America. And 
a lot, also a lot of things happened during Reichscon. Uh, for instance, <clears throat> the president in Hungary has introduced legislation that could end up closing the Central European University. Um, we have a, a yet another institutional crisis in Venezuela with uh, the closing of the parliament. Um, we also have um, a, a, a dynamic coalition on publicness that put together the first drafts of a position about the right to be forgotten. And also we had a great participation from my region, from Latin America, with people from a lot of countries. I just can't name everyone. Um, these amazing people that are still fighting for a lot of things that need reform. Still surveillance is a big, big, big issue in many places, especially in Mexico um, uh, and in the whole region, of course. We still are fighting to have uh, new neutrality duly um, enshrined into law without zero rating schemes. And we are also fighting against violence online. We have a recent example in Paraguay against gender activists. I just can't name all the issues because it would be never ending. But, um, uh, and also uh, I want to give a shout out to our friends from Brazil, from the Coalition, from the Internet Rights. You can find it in direitosnarede.org.br. I'm going to, to, to put that uh, with the Twitter hashtag. So it's a lot of things that I could say about the region, but the important thing is that this finds us again together um, in an international venue uh, with uh, a lot of our energy and our heart into working together and finding these connections that are going to help all of us to make the internet a better place. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Ramanjit Singh Chima. I'm Access Now's Policy Director. Um, as we've been seeing challenges this year, the point is also to remember our wins and to safeguard them and to strengthen our networks. These networks help make sure that we hold the line and in fact that we can try and advance the line. As many previous uh, people on stage have mentioned, we had lots of people meeting and sideline discussions here, but in particular, I just wanted to call out the now third meeting of the Digital Rights Litigators Network, lawyers from across the world trying to make sure that in court, not just in policy spaces, but in court, they can protect people's rights and advance them. The meeting of the Global Net Neutrality Coalition, holding on to net neutrality in countries where it's under threat, but also advancing it with policymakers and parliaments across the world being open to enshrining net neutrality in law. The Coalition Against Sur Surveillance Exports, uh, the third, now, I think, second meeting of the technology company General Councils, many, many others. So we need to strengthen these networks. But as we do this, we also need to invest in the future, invest in protecting rights. And this is a situation where we need to make sure data protection, privacy, in an age of artificial intelligence, in an age where governments are mandating national biometric IDs, that we're able to advance this and, more, and make sure that everyone can connect. In particular, shutdowns cannot become the new normal. We must prevent their normalization. And these are challenges that all of us must work together on. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm sure you're ready to get out of this room. It's so hot. Um, <laughs> but I just wanted to say, um, I, you know, it's, it's good to be optimistic, but I also don't want to be delusional. The issues are still going on. Um, the gap is widening, I mean, tremendously between the global north and global south. Um, we see this perfectly well with the deployment of new technologies and places like India, places like Tunisia, places like Jordan, everywhere, without proper legal frameworks or proper policies to structure them and ensure that we're protecting consumers and users and their data and their privacy, et cetera, et cetera. And so to bring it so close to home, actually, uh, we see such real impacts, such as with the Aadhaar project in India, um, where just having, uh, being required to have a digital ID can uh, prevent you from having access to water and food and transportation and health. These are very, very real issues. Um, but I, I also did want to say that after all of the conversations I've been having with people, and trust me, most of the real stuff doesn't happen in panels, it happens in the corridors, and I'm so convinced that there has never been a generation that is more ready than this generation to tackle these issues. And seeing all of you here, seeing all of your, you know, so many nationalities being represented, I'm just truly inspired. And um, I, I know that we're going to tackle these issues together, and I'm so happy you all joined us, and uh, we'll see you next year. Okay. Thanks. Thank you so much. And um, thanks to our photographer, um, who's put all these photographs together and managed to get them up already. So thank you very much. Um, okay, so now 
um, there's kind of a moment where we generally um, decide or announce where the next year's event is going to be. Um, and normally it would be in Silicon Valley. Um, come here, Nick. <laughs> um, but the travel ban to the United States is a major problem um, in six countries for a number of the people who are in this room. Um, and the arbitrary discriminatory practices, uh, arbitrary and discriminatory practices are just not something that we think that we can support. Um, the checking of devices at the border, um, the asking of social media handles on um, visa forms, um, and some of this is a condition to entry. As well as all of the other decisions that are being, um, issues that are being decided upon contrary to, I think, the perspective and views of many of the people in this room, um, is not something that we can necessarily support. Um, and so, we're not so sure whether the US is actually the right place for RightsCon next year. On the other hand, um, there's never been a more important time to have a conference on human rights in America. So it's a really, really difficult decision for us and we've been talking about it as a team and Nick and I have been discussing it a lot. Um, so we started to talk with the Canadian government um, and we also talked with Canadian partners, many of whom in this room, and asked them about the possibility of hosting um, RightsCon in Canada um, for next year. And um, so I wanted to get your sense of like what you think. Um, <laughs> 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 so the, the decision, <laughs> I feel like I'm on a reality television show and I never even watch them. <laughs> it's, it's easier to get a Canadian visa. It's easier, yeah. I'm just citing so many people saying get Schengen visas. Yeah. 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 <laughs> No, no, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the, the fact that there are actually people who cannot get a visa because of their nationality and because of their religion, it actually um, kind of is a different category of determination. Di diversity and inclusion is a, yeah. an integral part of this conference, and it's difficult to host a conference in a, in a country that you cannot have people in the audience attend. And so, and so we're thinking about, like, you know, having the discussions with the tech companies, as many of the guys mentioned, is so important, but not actually having the voices of the people that make up this community. So, without further ado. Um, RightsCon 2018, Toronto. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And with that, we'd like to... And with that, we'd like to. <laughs> and with that, we'd like to thank our sponsors. Um, thanks very much to all of them who have participated. They're not our sponsors, although they may as well be. <laughs> um, thanks to our sponsors um, for all of their support. Um, without them, this would not have happened. You guys might leave. <laughs> um, can we have a round of applause for the sponsors? Okay, we're done. We'll see you next year. Thank you. See you next year.